It makes me want to shoop, shoop, Stop shoop. Stop with the shooping. You're listening to That Gets My Goat. Shoop, da doop, shoop, da doop, shoop, da doop, da doop, da you know, boys and girls, I would have kept you from this kind of thing. I try here to protect I come, you. Here I come. Here I come. I try again. to shield you from the truly ugly parts of the world <laughs> for as long as I could. But eventually, you have to see That's that right. there are there are people like Big who know that Salt and Pepper song, <laughs> and and they're miserable because of it, and they want you to be miserable too. That's right. We just want to see the world burn. That's, that's, that's not inaccurate. I just want to show them my toys. A tangerine. All right, so... I Welcome just... to the Doonstiefs. That gets my goat. Okay. I'm Big Anklevich. And I'm Rish Outfield. And we're here with the show that you demanded. <laughs> yeah, they, they did, and... I wish they demanded, but my writing <laughs> career skyrocketed. Uh, I, I wish they demanded a couple more inches on me as well. Because, yeah, it happened. We went and saw Deadpool. Yeah, um, we did. He dragged me kicking and screaming. Like a little girl. And, uh, yeah, I, I think I talked about, when we talked about Comic-Con, why I didn't want to go to Deadpool. I just, uh, I didn't want to feel like the old guy in the theater that, you know, didn't know how to, you know, run up. The 21st century equivalent of a VCR. I was the only person in the Hall H that wasn't screaming and orgasming in their pants about all the F words and the, the hyper violence at that Deadpool panel. And it doesn't do it for me anymore. You know, I want there to be something else. And he wants at least some cuddling, too. That's right. It's it. You want to say it. Go ahead and say what you were about to say. <laughs> Come on. <laughs> if I remember the quote, I'd be saying it right now. I'm not sure what quote I should say. Uh, the ladies prefer a, oh, a, a more a softer porn with a story and period costumes. And what, am I getting it close? <laughs> so you just you felt like you would feel like when you went to see uh, that what was that movie? Um, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim. Yeah, Scott Pilgrim is probably a perfectly cromulent movie. But it made me feel about 90 years old. And so, uh, uh, yeah, I can't endorse it. But, yeah, the movie was coming out and it had huge, huge buzz, uh, Deadpool. And it was, you know, so many, like, young people, people that, you know, barely looked up from their phone when you're trying to have a conversation with them, were excited. It know, knew when it was coming, you know. It, it had replaced Valentine's Day for the activity for the week that it came out. And uh, I think the week prior or two weeks prior... Paul, Pride and Prejudice and Zombies had come out. And I totally predicted that that one would crash and burn. And, and you remember why, right? It's like Jane Austen fans are not going to want to go see a movie where their book has been tainted by zombies. And horror fans aren't going to want to go see their zombie movie that's been tainted by, you know, petticoats and, and English moors and, you know, Elizabeth Bennet, right? Right. And I was right. That movie still, in the far reaches, you can hear it losing money right as we speak. And so I was like, wow, I, predict I predicted that pretty well. I, I think I know. I've got my fingers on the pulse of what uh, what's going to happen. And uh, Deadpool's coming out. Um, that one's just going to be too niche, guys. You know, it's an R-rated flick with a, a niche character. It's a superhero character, but it's, you know, super violent. It's, apparently it has boobies in it. Uh, lots and lots of profanity. I think that one's going to be a miss. And uh, the studios were, all, you know, all talking about how how is it going to do? And the pundits said, well, it could make up to $60 million this weekend that it comes out. And I was still like, $60 million. In its dreams, it's going to make $60 million. And uh, <laughs> it came out. <laughs> And after like the Thursday night previews, all the pundits said, okay, hey, um, we're, we're upping that figure to $87 million. And I was just like, what? No, no. I, like I said, it's not even going to make 60. It ended up making about $130 million in its opening weekend. It, it, am I remembering that? Correctly? Yeah. It was right around there. I don't know exactly the number, but at least double 
what they were saying it was going to make. And yeah, all the people that I knew, even like grandparents went to see it. I, I pretty much was <laughs> the one guy who didn't go to see it. And <laughs> My dad and stepmom went and saw it and they came home and said, wow, the violence. Why did we go and see that? Well, I just, you kind of had just, to. Everybody was seeing it, so it felt like we had to. Yeah, there you go. <laughs> so, uh, so I was wrong on that. And, uh, we can talk afterward, after we talk about the movie, about the ripple effect that that's going to cause. Uh, and has already started. Yeah. The, 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 the listeners of the show wanted us to go see it. Yeah, they wanted to hear what you had to say. Well, what about you? Nobody wants to hear what I have to say. They, they know that I just come along with the package. It's like the, you, you have to wipe your butt after you shit. Shitting's the really nice, satisfying part. Nobody wants to stick their hand in there and wipe the poop away after, but you have to. It's just kind of part of the deal. Woo. Hey, you know, can we just avoid the scatological, please? <laughs> oh, you know, sorry. I don't like that kind of let stuff. Me, I, I, I would certainly never write stories about it or find references to it in everything that I write. <laughs> let me try and think of a different analogy then. Oh, okay. That's cool. It's funny that I would go there first. Uh, wow. You, uh... I must have you some may kind have... of mental illness. Oh, don't go there, sir. Uh, acute fecal philia. The, no, that was that was harsh that you would consider yourself that. I mean, well, at least I'm not you're at shit. least as shitty as me. Oh, thank you. <laughs> oh, I guess I should warn people there may be profanity in this episode. No way to tell for sure. Um, <laughs> no, I'm just we're gonna fire a warning shot. It may be benign. But uh, there, there may also there may be profanity. <laughs> you gotta expect that in a Deadpool review. <laughs> the 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 funny thing is, I mean, I was reading comics when Deadpool was created, and uh, I, I actually bought that issue of New Mutants, which which was his first appearance. I think it was like New Mutants ninety eight. You know, the day it came out or whatever. Um, but then I missed like his his rocket to rise to stardom, fame. Yeah, he. Uh, he is really, really, really popular with, like, the generation right after mine, if if that's a generation. Generation Y, like they say, you know? And Those are millennials. Yeah, okay. I see, I guess at some point. I, say, I'm, I was under the impression that your wife had coined the term millennials, because that was the first time I ever heard it. <laughs> but now you hear it all the time. Yeah. But I had always heard it as a pejorative, you know, like cocksucker. Uh -huh. You can't say that. I mean, maybe, maybe you could say that in a nice way. It's just like, you know, oh, that... Judy Garland was a cox. No, you can't really do that. Sorry, uh, there may be profanity in this episode. <laughs> uh, but millennial sounded just like, you know, millennials. That's, that's how, you know, like something that Clint Eastwood's character in Grand Torino would uh -huh. growl from the porch. But apparently that they have accepted that the way that, you know, certain people may take a slur and claim it for themselves. Yeah, they, they take it back. And now millennial apparently means something good. Like, Just means the generation after you. Yeah, well, fuck them. <laughs> so, a bunch of millennials were really, really excited about Deadpool and about the movie, about the character. You find Deadpool's face and on everything. And every time you and I go to a convention, there's always a ton of Deadpools. Walking around, you know, they'll be like, girl Deadpool, I dressed up my dog as Deadpool, I'm zombie Deadpool, you know, I'm, etc. And, and yeah, there were, there were lots of kids, like your kids are into Deadpool. I'm not old enough to go see the movie. Yeah, I'll have to admit they were pretty upset when they discovered that it was a uh, R-rated film and that they weren't going to be allowed to just go and watch it if they wanted to. Not as upset as they're going to be this week. <clears throat> Okay, sorry, that seemed like a great preamp, a great deal of preamble about this movie. But so we went uh, before we get we got to finish the preamble. You were so against going to see this movie. Well, not and against it. So I just didn't feel like I needed to. You're see like the movie. I do not. Well, I am not. You you refused. I didn't. And refuse. I was just like, okay, I'm going to put it to the listeners. And see what they have to say. See if they'll, they can get you to be forced to go and see this. So I told them all that you were not interested. And, um, uh, they came out in force, in numbers, in, on 
mass. Yeah. If, does do do two posts count as <laughs> numbers and on mass? Two would, but we're talking like there was at least fifteen comments, <laughs> and that's probably three times as many as we've ever gotten. And they all said, "Do it." <laughs> Do it! Did the actual cannibal Shia LaBeouf say anything by any chance? <laughs> and so, yeah. So so we went. I forced you to come with me. I said, we're doing an episode. And I dragged you out here. And we went in and saw it. And did you feel like the oldest guy there? Did you? Well, there feel... were four of us in the theater, counting me. <laughs> so chances are I was the oldest person there. Did yeah, you but... feel like you shouldn't have been there? Like you were in the wrong room? Like the end of Invasion of the Body Snatchers? No. I didn't feel like that. I, but had I gone to see it opening <laughs> night, where I was the only person without a retainer in the audience, then maybe I would have felt super old. But we had waited so long to go see it. I think we were going to go see it last week. Uh, yeah, we were going to go see it last week, but that was the week that it came out. We're only a week late. Okay, but that doesn't explain why there were only four people in the theater. Well, it's also a Monday night. There's not a lot of people going to see movies on Monday, usually. Okay, well, yeah, I, I, I don't want to be a douche. I, I, if people want us to do something, and, and I, I didn't refuse to see it. I just didn't feel like I needed to see it. And I didn't want to feel like the only person not in on the joke. Or I, Now, I've told you about the very first time I, when I, the very first comic convention I ever went to was in 2004. And they were making this movie, Serenity, right there in L.A. And the entire cast was there. And I'd never seen a single episode of this Firefly show. And I was in the audience, right? And I've, if you're a new listener to the show, then you've never heard this story before. But the entire cast of this show that not only had nobody watched, but nobody watched it, came out. And the people in the audience were screaming and, and cheering and fainting and crying like Paul McCartney had just stepped out and been reunited with John Lennon for the first time. They had this panel. They were talking about getting the band back together and all this stuff. And th this Whedon guy says, oh, yeah, I've got an idea. <laughs> he's like, how many of you know this theme song to Firefly? And he says, let's sing it. And people stood up. And I kid you not, people put their hands over their hearts <laughs> and sang, take my land, take my virginity. What was the, how did the song go? And I looked around and I was just like, some, I just had a brain aneurysm. What the hell is going on? <laughs> Have all of you lost your minds? And I've just I, been I, transported into a parallel dimension. It was a parallel dimension, yeah, where, where Gore was on his second term as president. And, and I just, I, there were people crying. They were so moved by singing this song in the audience. And I was like, holy cow, what is wrong with me? And they kept talking about episodes and their favorite moments and things that were coming up. And, oh, it was so great when this and that, you know, Mal buck naked in a garbage can and stuff. And I was like, why? <laughs> and everybody laughed at every single reference. And, and I, I just, I felt out of the loop like you wouldn't believe. I was just like, oh, my gosh, why am I even here? And, and that's the weird thing is why would I have gone to a Serenity cast and crew panel, you know? And I, I don't know. It's been long enough that it's like, why would I have gone to that? <laughs> but I did. Maybe because it was Joss Whedon and you like Buffy? No, no, I didn't like Buffy either. I Joss Whedon, I it was a guy that would come into the video store and make fun of Alien Resurrection with me. And he signed my Toy Story. He had written Toy Story, so that's how I knew him. Anyhow, I, I that same day, I was like, okay, well, I got to find out. You know, I went and I... I, I watched the first episode of Firefly, and I was like, I, I, I. and you shit your pants. Well, no, no, it took a couple episodes actually. Oh, it took me just the one. I know it did, but by the time that movie came out, in I think it was August two thousand five, I was a fan of Firefly, and I'd seen all those episodes, and you know, I I was converted. So I guess there was a happy ending to that. Oh, well, as everybody lost their minds, story. But I just didn't like that feeling. I don't like that <laughs> feeling. Well, you you don't want to be the guy that's not cool, though. Well, so believe gotta, me, I, I've been that a lot. I you gotta, am still. you got to force yourself to go and see. And so did you feel that way? I mean, you didn't know Shoop when they played it. But you knew 
Damn it, what was the song? I've forgotten it Just again. call me Angel yeah, of the Morning Angel. You knew that song, Just see? You, well, you knew Careless Whisper. Oh, hell yes, I knew Careless <laughs> Whisper, baby. Oof. You knew uh, Mr. Sandman. That's a little more my style. You knew my calendar, my. girl. <laughs> February. You knew X is going to give it to him. Oh, hell yeah, that DMX is my... No, no, I never heard that song before. Come on, man. <laughs> Don't talk that way to me. Okay, so we went to it because you guys demanded it. And listen, I do stuff for you, baby. Everything I do, baby, it's like the Brian Adams song that I don't know because of the voice I'm doing. I My fans are important to me, uh, be, mostly because I'm under the impression that they don't exist. But yeah, if you wanted us to go see Fudgeon... Okay, I know something's coming out that looks real bad. I just... I don't know what it is. I would go see it. What? What? Uh, I don't know. What was that one we saw the trailer for? Mike and somebody need need dates. wedding dates. Yeah, and okay. that that was another one where I was like, yeah, that's I'm that movie's not made for me. Oof. Although, um, did you ever see Neighbors? The Seth Rogen. Yeah, I saw it with um, you. <laughs> okay, they made a sequel to that. <laughs> yes, I saw. And that. that looks really good to me. And I wonder, is that because I saw Neighbors? Or is it just, I don't know, I, Seth Rogen trying to be funny doesn't work for me. But Seth Rogen being the straight man is funny to me. Is okay. that weird? Once again, I'm from a parallel earth. I may have drank too much. Yeah. My stomach hurts. It's about to hurt way more. Mm, don't. Just whatever you do, don't, because that would be my death. Yakov Smirnoff opening for the Spin Doctors in the Iowa State Fair. Was it Iowa or Ohio? I think it was Iowa. Ohio would be more hip because they have a couple of big cities there. Okay. So you tell me your experience with Deadpool and why you wanted to see the movie, Mother. Well, I don't, I don't know Deadpool all that much. I have come to know Deadpool over the last little while, basically along with my kids. My kids, for some reason, love Deadpool. They really, really love him. The only experience I really had with him is he had a guest spot on the... Not amazing, not spectacular. spectacular. Ultimate? Ultimate Spider-Man. There we go. He's got a lot of superlatives that go with him. He was on there for an episode, and he was super annoying. And and Ultimate Spider-Man is already played as though it's a Deadpool show. Mm -hmm. They do all sorts of asides to fourth wall breaks to the camera with little big-headed Spider-Man guy. <clears throat> that yeah, I mean they do that show already, like he's Deadpool, and then they brought Deadpool onto the show, and he was way, way, way over the top. But I guess my kids dug on that; they liked it a lot. Can't remember if I mentioned this some, another time on the show. I think I have. But anyways, we were on vacation in Canada <coughs> last year, and I was occupying the kids at one point, and we went to the mall just to have something to do. And we walked through this mall, we found a bookstore, we went to the bookstore, and my daughter, who was 11, saw a Deadpool trade paperback. It was, I think, three, you know, book number three of the series, but she was like, this is what I, I want, this is what I want to buy while we're here, this is it. And she was adamant that she had to have that, until I pointed out to her that it was book three, and then she's like, oh, forget it. I but hate we came, you, Daddy. But we came straight. When we got home, we got on Amazon and found book one and ordered it. And all my kids were so excited and they all read it. And that same daughter now has like a little Deadpool keychain thingy that she bought at uh, a store hanging off of her backpack, which is a Batman backpack. My other son has something like that as well. They all just, they love Deadpool and I don't understand why. I mean, he's... Kind of funny, kind of wacky, a little crazy. I don't understand the the whole fascination for it. I mean, I do like the things that they do with him. I like the fourth wall breaks. The fourth wall breaks within fourth wall breaks, which makes it 16 walls, right? <laughs> Apparently, yeah. My math skills aren't really up to snuff, but... Uh... <clears throat> I mean, when, and yeah, even before the movie came out, when, uh, you know, the quote unquote, I'm making quotes in the air, leaked footage hit the internet, it was remarkable how close to the comic that costume looked. Um, I, as far as I know, and you could correct me, 
except for I'm not wrong. Nobody's ever done the comic book eyes before. Yeah, the comic book eyes all sort of freaked me out at first. Oh, they looked in so the leaked, good. In the leaked stuff, I was just like, the white eyes, I don't, that's unusual, it's weird. I didn't have a problem with it when we actually watched the movie, but for some reason when I saw all the trailers. It's funny too, you know how they, they put out the red band trailer? Okay. With all the splattering and the blood and the headshots and stuff. Your three-year-old my brought that to your attention. My hey, Daddy, son look, tried. check this shit out. What, my what? son tried to watch it, but it wouldn't let him because he's not. Lo- he was logged into his YouTube account, and so it wouldn't let him see it. Somebody's doing their job. Yeah, how about that? Yeah, the, the, I, a tiny bit of background on the movie uh, that I found out at that panel was um, the Tim Miller guy that directed it. This was his first movie, and... It took a lot of convincing to get Fox on board. Um, and, and most of the convincing was, we'll do this way cheaper than we said we would. If they had, you know, a lot more control creatively and they could do it R rated. And, uh, to me, it seemed like a mistake to make it R rated because, you know, you're essentially cutting off half of your audience. I, I you know what I mean? Deadpool seems to be geared perfectly to like a 14 year old boy yeah he's hip with the kids and you made the kids uh, unable to come i thought you know that that was a mistake on fox's part that it was gonna you know come back and bite him because they just you know had gone t- too narrow you know like watchmen watchmen was a really good movie i thought but it's not going to be going to appeal to the masses it's like there's a certain demographic that's going to like that movie. I mean, it was so brutal and nihilistic and dark and grim and long. <laughs> and I don't think you ever even was, saw it, did you? There was a lot of blue schlong. There was a tiny bit of blue schlong, yes. Sorry. Okay, sorry, not tiny. <laughs> there was a wee long. bit. Long. Not wee either. Anyhow, I was wrong. It made Fox so much money that they can essentially tell Marvel Studios to go after themselves for another few years. <laughs> <laughs> um, but yeah, not only did the Deadpool look like Deadpool, but Colossus looked like Colossus and yeah, Nagasonic teenage warhead. Isn't it Nagasonic? Is it Naga? I have no care. Because she's negative. But, uh, she was identical to the way that hack uh, Frank quietly drew her. So there you go. <laughs> and yeah, the movie didn't need my money. It didn't need me to go to it to be successful. It, uh, it did real good on its own. But it got your money anyways. Got John Hyams, honey. <laughs> but another thing, though, Ryan Reynolds. I love Ryan Reynolds. I first met Ryan Reynolds on the set of Van Wilder, and he just sat with the rest rest of us peons. And I I worked on it several days in a row. And the first day, I had no idea who Ryan Reynolds was. But I went home and I looked it up on the internet, so that the next day, I could make fun of Ryan Reynolds <laughs> to Ryan Reynolds, and I did. And I was just like, yeah, the Ryan Reynolds guy is like, from some fudge and pizza place show. Any idea who, who he is? And Reynolds said, oh, yeah, he's around here somewhere. He's a real asshole. <laughs> and I was just like, wow, this guy's okay. <laughs> I met him a and couple of times. And then he took his pants off for you, right? And no, I took my pants off in front of him. Oh. Reynolds, not the, the other way around. I uh, guess that makes more sense. Yeah, well, he's a handsome guy. <laughs> uh, but, you know, I'm the only person in the world... That didn't have a problem with X-Men Origins Wolverine. And Ryan Reynolds was in that, too. And, and I, I thought he was really, really funny. And They it, referred to that version of him once, twice. Three times a Did they do three times a maybe? I think only once. I can't think of once, the third but... time. No, there was two. First of all, there was oh, the action figure. Sew, they said they would sew his mouth shut. And then shut. later they said they would sew his mouth shut. They had Hugh Jackman in there twice. They had the... the, the the mask at the end, plus he talked about how he had to, to uh, what did he say about uh, what he had to do? Like, he says, you know, how did I get my own superhero movie? Yeah. And, and then he, he said he had to, like, stroke his balls or I can't remember what. His something down end. down. Yeah, and he kept, he st- he kept using the <laughs> Australian accent for it. Was there a third time they well, met? The, yeah, there was a People Hugh magazine, Jackman. Oh, Hugh yes. Jackman's Sexiest Man Alive on the cover. There was several, yeah. They did a lot of that. That And, and, and they even took a shot at uh, Green Lantern and his green costume. Of course, that was in the first trailer. but 
<laughs> you think Ryan Reynolds has a career because he's a good actor? Cause, yeah, because of his acting prowess. Is that what he said? Skill or something like anyway, that. Anyway, I thought Ryan Reynolds was an absolutely fantastic choice for this character. Um, even, you know, in that 2009 movie. I mean, yeah, okay, he shows up as this zombie monster thing at the end. But uh, in the scenes where he was Wade Wilson, I thought he was just great in that movie. But, you know, again, me against the world on that. It's okay. Someday we'll do the uh, movies we love that you hate <laughs> show. And you can talk all about Pearl Harbor. How did you know that was coming? <laughs> Ooh, I love Pearl Harbor. Anyhow, uh, Ryan Reynolds was in this. Uh, Morena Baccarin was in oh this. Oh my gosh, Morena Baccarin was. <laughs> <sighs> take my life, take, take my, my land, land, take me where I cannot stand. He's emphasizing the take me part of that song. Take me now on the pool table. <laughs> I like Marina I just Baccarin. want serenity. Dude, she it's funny too because when she came in at the start with the short hair, I didn't recognize her. I was just like, she looks familiar. Why does she look familiar? And then they went through the calendar. And her hair, and then her hair was longer. And I was like, no, oh, that's why she looks familiar. She's not that V girl, she's that girl from Serenity. Hmm. Sorry, but, you're gonna have to folks, go let's on. just I'm, give Big a moment, all right? I'm gonna we'll need, just, yeah, I'm gonna he's need gonna a need moment. A, I'm, I'm, from from what I can see, you know, about two and a half more minutes, and then we'll be <laughs> we'll be ready to continue. Uh, but uh, you know, the super choreographed violence in this movie, um, while it's not, it wasn't necessarily my thing. It was entertaining. I thought the film was well well shot. You know, there wasn't any of the really obnoxious ways that people make movies going on in there. And it was super cheap. They did all that stuff for way less than all the other superhero movies that are coming out. Well, that was part of the, you know, what they had to do. To but it there. didn't look like they did it for way less. As far as I could tell, they spent just as much. So that's something. If more people would do that... Things like Deadpool, all you know, there's all like you talk. It comes out and at the end in his bathrobe and tells us about Cable. <gasps> cable is coming. Just we just need a dude with a flat top. Flat top. So it could be Dolph Lundgren. <laughs> he did. Say he's like Mel Gibson. Could be Dolph Lundgren. Could be who's a third? <laughs> Kira Knightley. Knightley. Yes. So they could do a Cable movie. They could do all sorts. Way smaller characters if they could do movies at that price. Those budgets of these movies are so inflated and so much more than they need <clears> to be. <throat> there was a trailer for something we saw before Deadpool. And it I was, said to you, London has fallen. And you were just like, yeah, this movie would probably be really good if it had like half the budget. Because it was just like, let's blow up another bridge and another bridge. And it doesn't even look good. Maybe young people, maybe kids your kids' age, haven't seen a million explosions yet. And so that is like, whoa, they blew up a bridge. But, I mean, you and I could sit here if we wanted to take two minutes and name ten movies where they blow up a bridge. I remember when and blowing up a bridge was cool, but that was true lies. I mean, that was 90, what, five? 94, yeah. 94. Oh, my gosh. Okay. That was a long time ago when blowing up a bridge was cool. Anyway, sometimes these movies cost a fortune, and, and a lot of it, you know, is when Hugh Jackman gets $20 million for the movie, you know, right there. That is a movie, the $20 million. You could make a fine film. You could make a sci-fi film for $20 million. You could get some silver lamé costumes and make one for $1,000, really. <laughs> I'd like to see you do that. <laughs> Folks, uh, if you'd like to donate to the show so Big can make... A movie starring his infant son, but reprising the role that his other son portrayed when he was an infant that Big never finished. Donate to the show and help make that happen. Yeah, Silver LeMay is, I mean, instant sci-fi, yes. instant future. You see that and you say, oh, you think, okay. Oh, Forbidden Planet. Holy cow. It must be 1978, the distant future of, <laughs> almost 1980 when this must take place. Uh, anyhow. I, I would like to know what you thought about Deadpool, what you thought about the, the movie. I enjoyed it. I, I can tell you enjoyed it 
for the most part as well. Um, it was fast moving and it was fun. Uh, you know, and, and dead, the, the style of Deadpool with the, you know, Woody Allen type guy who keeps talking to the camera. Is, flashbacks within flashback and then the flashback would stop. Yeah. The, the, <laughs> my, it's funny. My daughter came to me the other day and asked me, Hey dad, what, what is a nonlinear plot line? What does that, what does that mean? And I was trying to think of a good movie that she'd actually seen. I was just like, yeah, you know, like Pulp, Pulp Fiction, Fiction or uh, shoot, even Hateful Eight. Uh, <laughs> Uh, Honey, remember when I sat you down and you watched Fight Club with me? <laughs> like, oh. I kept trying to think of something that she would have seen that's, oh, yeah, that at was your third birthday party when we watched Reservoir Dogs. I, and I couldn't come up with something, but but yeah, there's Deadpool, which she also won't be able to see. <laughs> but yeah, the nonlinearness where they start a, a great bit of action and then he goes back and rem and then they come back and then he goes back and remember some more and they come back and yeah, it, it was interesting. You know what I mean? It wasn't, it never felt weird. Uh, I'll have to admit, Hateful Eight felt weird when they jumped back because it's just like, Irk! stop. You know, it was like they put the brakes on everything, but it never felt like that with Deadpool. They kept going back to other parts, and it it was just as interesting. And maybe it was just because they didn't go so far, you know, that it wasn't a problem to suddenly hit the brakes right there and go into something else. I don't know, but yeah, I really enjoyed it. It was fun. It wasn't... I don't know, something amazing, something... There have been superhero movies that were more, you know, blow-you-away kind of movies, like Captain America Winter Soldier was much more of a, a, a mental type of a film as opposed to this one, which was just kind of a fun ride, basically. It was just a lot of fun, and... and there needs to be movies like that, ones that we can just go out and enjoy yourself for. So if you haven't seen it, hopefully we haven't ruined everything for you because, yeah, there was spoilers. But we're, we're not going to use the phrase spoiler alert anymore because it's become too cliche. Yeah, what was it that the guy said? Do you remember? Because it just really bothered me. There was a guy, we went to a panel the other day and there was a guy, I'm trying to remember what he says. But, he, you know, he's just like, well, you know, or, or, or if you want to end it like Romeo and Juliet and then he goes... Spoiler alert, they die. And it suddenly it was like, whoa, somebody had turned a spotlight on. And I was like, hey, hey, oh, you know what? That is not cool anymore, saying spoiler alert. F you. <laughs> that might have been funny a decade or two ago, but it's not funny anymore. I, I declare a moratorium on saying spoiler alert. Right? I leaned over and said that. What was the context? Uh, you told me about it the next day. I wasn't at the panel. Damn you! <laughs> But anyways, but, yeah. But do you disagree or can we, can we, oh, is it okay to declare a moratorium? On we can declare a moratorium on it. Now, I'm not saying that it's cool to say so-and-so dies in Force Awakens without warning you. But when people, and I'm making quotes in the air again, sorry, we need a video podcast so you can see when I do this. When people say, spoiler alert, I love you. You know, that kind of stuff. Oh, geez, not cool. Not, not cool at all. It's shaky cam, guys. Stop it. <laughs> okay. So, yeah, sorry if we spoiled anything for you, but... But Romeo and Juliet die at the end. Yeah. Yeah. Sorry about that. It's a 500-year-old story. That Gets My Goat will be continued next time. Run while you still can. Hi. I'm Marshall Latham from the Journey in Two podcast. For several years now, I have been taking you on fun, adventurous, warm heartfelt, scary, thoughtful, and frivolous journeys into space, mystery, fantasy, suspense, horror, and the unknown. And now, it's your turn. I want you to take me on a journey. You can submit your journey to me by entering the 2016 Journey Into Writing Contest. I will be accepting submissions from April 1st to May 1st, 2016. Your journey must be presented in 4,000 words or less, 
and its title must start with the words Journey Into The rest of the title and the journey itself is up to you. Please no splatter horror, grimdark, or explicit sexual content. Also, please avoid coarse profanity. The first, second, and third prize winners will receive modest cash prizes. The winning journeys will also be presented as full cast audio productions on the podcast, as well as some honorable mentions. For all the details, go to the website at journeyintopodcast.blogspot.com. I look forward to hearing from you, and until then, journey on. That Gizmo Go is produced under a Creative Commons 3.0 license. That'll teach you. Wait, sorry. I'll cut that. <clears throat> cut this too. <clears throat> oh! <laughs> it's about to steam up the windows a lot more than they already are. <laughs> Dutch Muff. oven from Meredith Baxter Bernie. That was funny. <laughs> what became of that guy? He died, huh? I, I expected so, him to pop yeah. up again, didn't you? I thought he was going to... I'll close that. No, I don't it's want your farts. It's not smelly. Oh. You haven't smelled it? You can't open a window until it stinks. Well, it felt good out there. No, it didn't. It's freaking cold. It was cold as ice. You, you drank cold hot chocolate, sir. It's your own fault. You shot the bed, now sleep in it. <laughs> Stay. Bark, bark, quack, tail. Good boy. Good boy. Really big? Seriously?